I'm also not a stranger to disasters, actually. Um, 117, 1995. I was earthquake, 7.2. Uh, I experienced that at age 14. So um, I don't know if you're all familiar with this, but in Kobe, um, big one struggle. Seeing this, he decided to become an architect. <laughs> um, schools. Uh, so my education. Uh, to become an architect, I went to Pratt from 99 to 04. Um, while in school, 9-11, uh, I was 20 years old. Uh, I seen the building fall and all that. Uh, very eerie atmosphere. I was there, seeing everything, all the people in ashes over the boats, helped them out and drove them to their homes at the time. Um, after graduating Pratt, I went to UCLA in 04 and 05, so east coast to west coast. Um, and so while I was working there, another one, a disaster hit that. So. The Griffiths Park uh, fire. Uh, and um, that was pretty big because it turns out that uh, his home was right here. So yeah, I had to evacuate. Uh, every five years or so, I'm just trying to get this disaster uh, here and there. <laughs> this so of course, I moved out. Experiencing the Kobe one. I kind of uh, sensed the big one coming with the preliminary tremor that you, that you find. This is my laboratory, by the way. It was right here. And this was uh, completely chaotic. Third floor was completely smashed. A lot of structural failures. Um, it was also in the cover of the architecture magazine. Um, What's unique about this particular case was that there was a structural reinforcement done in 2001, and this was the first case that that also failed. This is where the uh, the coast you kind of see, and this is where Sendai is, and this is where the uh, nuclear power plant that you all know about, and this is what's called the 20 kilometer radiation border. Um, you're not supposed to, there's a, yeah, they actually block people from getting in there, so you're not supposed to injure this particular area. And the site is actually uh, a little bit further away here, uh, which is about 12, 13 miles away uh, from the nuclear power plant. Um, the radiation spreads this way, uh, according to the, all the, the experts. Thinking about what architects can do was always the discussion between architects after the disaster. And I think, say there's three stages to disaster reactions, with, at least with this particular case. Um, initial ones, um, like, like this here, um, like the gymnasium, you cram thousands of people in the gymnasium. Um, where do you, and they're gonna be staying there for weeks. Um, how do you support their privacy? So another one, provide bath. More long term, how do you kind of maintain the community that's all been dispersed to temporary homes and their original communities? Are they ever going to return? Can they return? Um, again, radiation plays a part here with the case in Fukushima. Um, it always depends on how soon you can return 5, 10, 15 years later. Um, right? Do you even really want to go back? In, in the disaster area, you'll see a lot of signs, signage like this, encouraging us to move forward, resurrect, revive. You know. So there was nobody here until this disaster. Everybody was relocated. More than 500 families now live in this area. So a, a village has suddenly just uh, appeared. There's a couple of done wood, which is something new that's tried at this particular uh, <coughs> disaster event. Um, typically it was all done in prefab. There's a prefab association that does already prepare for this kind of disasters and always supplies the, the temporary homes. But this particular case, there were just uh, too many of, 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 of demand that they couldn't supply enough. So um, others had to kind of start to uh, commit to, to building them. So since uh, Fukushima is, their forestry industry is one of the, the biggest in, in Japan. So there's abundant uh, 
a wood uh, here in this area. So decided to try that, make them out of wood, um, which does get a pretty good reception by the residents. So it feels warmer, of course. Um, installation properties are a lot better. So this is what a typical uh, interior looks like, the kitchen. Um, for every 100 units, uh, the, the, there's a standard requirements to build 100 square meters of, of worth of assembly hall, a meeting for uh, community, social, and other activities. Um, so what our laboratory actually came up with was to build a shelter with a tower. Uh, again, it's a very flat landscape. Um, felt like we needed some kind of a vertical element to this, a, a symbol almost. Um, is it necessary or is it functional? I, I don't know, maybe we need to uh, think about it, but um, I thought uh, that was a pretty important looking at the site conditions and understanding what the people are, are the living condition and the environment there. Um, the tower is about eight meters in height. Just a series of triangles that's uh, rotated, stacked and rotated in a haiku rhythm, 57577. Um, initial concept was to have a, a bench also. Uh, some ways to, to evoke them to come out, initiate them to come out from their homes, talk to people, um, so this kind of a community establishment, re-establishment, I should say. Uh, another one is to add color or, or, or more, more to, to that particular uh, <coughs> environment. Um, we asked artists, contemporary artists, who does a lot of, uh, of these type of artwork um, to do a mural on our assembly hall. The site, uh, in more detailed drawings, uh, we have about 75 units here, uh, assembly halls here with the tower that was initially was planned. Um, the issues I thought while well, coming here uh, to that um, Minami Soma project um, at, and the future projects I think that we'll have to deal with is about radiation and disposing of debris, um, of course environmentals and the health risks and the community redevelopment. Um, radiation is definitely a, a big issue. And then issues about how to keep this disaster, the memory, um, is another, I think, important topic to think about. Um, there was a, a similar earthquake and tsunami hit uh, 120 years ago uh, in the same area region. And I visited this area, uh, the disaster areas, before the tsunami hit and the earthquake. And there were no sign whatsoever, uh, indication of, of that history. And uh, if I was, even, even the newer residents had no idea about it, um, which led to their delay in, in evacuating away from the tsunami and, and the outcomes of that, as you know. So keeping certain um, physical um, elements of that uh, particular disaster, I think, or how do you keep the memories, you know. Books don't do it. Uh, pictures don't do it, really. It has to be there at the site.